to start off by asking Tom, what was it like to have a film made about you? It's nice because it's the first time I'm releasing my story to the whole wide world. It's scary because strangers are looking and <coughs> at my story, but I am proud that my story might give other Aboriginal kids hope and strength. James, how do you feel about the film? I didn't know that Duan was being filmed until he came up to me. And his mother said that Maya was following him with a camera and they were making a film about him. <laughs> I was scared at first, but I was scared at first and not sure about being on camera. But then I got to know Maya and she explained why all the families in Alice Springs were making this film. They were making this film, uh, they were making it to share my son's story. And the film was a chance to get our story out there. Our stories are rarely told, our kids I really listened to. I realised I wanted to be a part of this film because it was a story about my son and I wanted to support him. <coughs> I am still worried about the politics and media that the film might trigger, but I am proud of Duan making this film and I will always support him with anything he does. <laughs> It is a privilege to come this far with the film. Thank you everyone in Australia and now I'm going back home to hide in the bush. <laughs> and Megan, what do you want people to walk away with after watching this film? We all want to give our kids a good future, but it's hard to be a parent. It's even harder to be an Aboriginal mum when everyone tells you, you're not good enough. I hear those people in newspapers, on TV, and all over Alice Springs every day. I want you all to know, Aboriginal parents do love and care about our kids. I hope this film sends that message to Australia. And I wanted to ask Margaret, uh, was it a surprise to have Duan come to stay? Well, me and Duan's mum, as you, you all know, rang us and said that we have to look after Duan for a while. She said that if we didn't, welfare might take him or the police might take him to Dondale. She was really scared. I watched on Four Corners what happened to kids in Dondale and I was very frightened for my grandson. He was not going to end up in there. So we rearranged our lives to have him back home. Since coming up, he's had a real change. He's still cheeky though. <laughs> <laughs> he is lucky because in Barlula, it's easy for us to go to country. He has a strong family and the police presence is more relaxed and while the school is not perfect they do have lots of Aboriginal teachers that are his family also. Duan is in a good place now and we are so happy to have him with us but we are still Aboriginal people living in a racist country. For example we still have basic cards and we did see the Adam Goods film the final quarter on Friday night. I hope this film can help change some laws in Australia, especially in the Northern Territory. We want to see more first languages 
support in our schools. We want to raise their age. Kids can be incarcerated to 14 years old and I can't believe Dondale Youth Prison is not closed after all the ill treatment of our children. I am very proud of Duan for sharing his story. I asked Duan just before we started here today, like what he would actually like to say to the Prime Minister, because we're trying to work out how to get him a meeting. <laughs> um, Duan, do you want to share what you wanted to say? I want my school to be run by Aboriginal people. I think we should stop crawling 10-year-old boys in jail. I want my future to be out on land with family and strong culture and language. <laughs>